Hello and welcome everyone. I am so glad that you've chosen the iCam. Today I will be showing you how to properly unbox and set up your iCam. So let's go ahead and get started. Be sure to remove the manual and the shipping material and be mindful of where you keep these items as they do hold general information about your system configuration. Let's identify each component of the DEN sheet provided in the shipping materials. First off, you will have the iCam 4D with the serial number, the calibration plate and the calibration plate support, the cable bundle, the power supply, the AC power cable, the USB 3 hub with its cable, an iCam body set of eight, iCam body screws, a screwdriver, and an iCam ref set of eight. Now, the iCam 4D is the big white component in the middle of your box. The camera will be facing down and labeled iCam, powered by a metric. So let's go ahead and grab the iCam by the two black handles coming from the sides and place the iCam on a steady workspace. I have a fun fact for you here too. Uh, if you look at the bottom of your iCam, the serial number will be provided. You'll need the serial number when you talk to any iMetric support personnel. And you can find that here. Next up, we have one of the most important components to any photogrammetry unit on the market. You can find a white box located inside the shipping box. It's on the far right side here. This white box holds two items, the calibration plate and the calibration plate support. So let's carefully take out the calibration plate. The best method is to grab the sides of the plate itself. It's important also to not touch the side of the uh, calibration plate with the white dots. Your hands actually produce oils uh, that will deteriorate the surface, making the plate unable to be recognized by the camera system. This piece of equipment is vital to the process of measuring implant positions, as this process includes calibrating the camera system prior to every case slash measurement. And also take notice on the bottom of the calibration plate that there are two magnets. Now if you look at the other side of the box you will find a black metal plate. This black metal plate functions as a base to the calibration plate. It allows it to stand upright for the ease of the calibration process. It is important to place the base plate on a steady surface close to the area where the camera will be located. All right. So let's go ahead and place the white box back into the shipping box or somewhere easily accessible to store the calibration plate and the support if ever needed. Next, you will notice a long cable wrapped in a black protective sleeve. Functionally, this cable serves as a signal connection between the computer and the camera itself. It also provides power to your camera system via a pronged cable. Let's talk about the care of this cable bundle. The bundle is vital as it provides the connection from your camera to the computer. If you lose connection between the pair, you will no longer be able to take a measurement using the iCam. To ensure the longevity of this cable, take mine to not leave it in a place where it can be damaged by, let's say, rolling carts, chairs, or just people stepping on it, right? Also, it is best not to tightly wrap the cable bundle around the camera or any other object. This is as much as you would want to wrap that cable. Identify the end of the cable bundle that has the USB-B connection and the four-prong power connector side by side. The USB-B connector will be inserted into the back of the iCam in the far left connector. So be sure to check the orientation of the USB-B connector before inserting it into the iCam. Far left connector, checking the orientation of my USB-B, and inserting into the iCam. Now let's connect the four prong power by observing where the internal prongs are on the power connector. Also take note of where the prongs can be inserted into the iCam. Once seated, you can then turn the circular connector clockwise to tighten the power connector to the camera. This will ensure that the cable's power connection uh, is stable.
Now let's make the other half of the connection that powers the camera itself. So let's look for the large black component uh, located on the other side of the cable bundle. This component will be about six inches long and three inches wide with a cable, an integrated cable coming from the other side. On the other side, there should be a three prong power connection recessed into the back of the power supply. This is where you will be plugging in your AC power connection. Uh, this will be the cable that plugs into your wall outlet. And we will discuss this later in a, another section. We have found the best practice for safely turning the camera on and off is to use the power button on the back of the iCam. It'll be located on the far right side. This button is a new feature for the new generation of the iCam. It allows for the camera to be safely powered on and off. If you're going to power the camera system down for the entire day, go ahead and unplug the AC power cable from the wall outlet. Let's also periodically check the condition of the integrated power cable coming from the power supply. Now let's identify the AC power cable. The AC power cable is a singular cord that sends 110 volt power to the power supply. You will find it at the bottom of the box. The cable is long and black and it has a male and female connector on each end. The male connector will be inserted into a three prong wall slash power outlet. The female connector will then be inserted into the power supply itself. And I'll do that now. Monitoring an AC power cable is essential for both the safety and the maintenance of the iCam. Here is a step-by-step -step guide for safely monitoring the condition and the operation of the AC power cable. Initial monitoring should begin with a simple visual inspection, so look for any obvious signs of wear, damage, or heat-related issues such as melted insulation on the cable. You can also carefully fill the cable with your hands to detect any abnormal heating. An overheating cable can be an indication of a serious problem. To prevent the risk of electrical shock, ensure your hands are dry and that you're not standing in a wet area. Next is the USB 3 hub with the USB cable. The USB hub is the component that has four blue USB-A connecting ports on one side and a singular USB-B connection port on the other. So this item is essential when it comes to the connectivity and the speed of your measurement. Superspeed USB 3.0 technology offers transfer rates of up to 5 gigabytes per second. The blue cable is the USB Superspeed cable itself. Um, this has an A connector on one end and a B connector on the other. To make the connection, let's grab the blue USB cable and plug it into your computer using the USB-A mail connector. That would be this connector right here. The USB-B male portion of the connector will then be inserted into the USB-B portion of the SuperSpeed Hub. So this is the side where there is only one port present. Okay, and there's that connection. We also have a USB-C to Type-B connector if needed for your computer. Next, let's grab the USB cable bundle itself. There will be a lone USB-A connector that will then be inserted into the hub, into any of the four ports here. This is the USB connector that you see on most phone cables. All right. As far as safety goes for the USB SuperSpeed Hub and the cable, they are both fairly resilient. By using the SuperSpeed Hub, you are ensuring a safe and efficient connection between the computer and the iCam. Things to note here. Try not to tightly bend or wrap the USB cable. Also, when disconnecting the USB ports on the U USB SuperSpeed Hub, try to pull the USB cables straight out. Do not pull at an angle or you may dislodge the internal connection. This applies to any USB connection, but especially the one that is on your iCam unit itself. Next, let's dive into our final four components. They will all be packaged together in a singular plastic bag at the bottom of the shipping box. Starting with the iCam bodies, I'm gonna open the bag here. Now, these are the compact domino-like scan bodies that will be attaching to your MUAs. These iCam bodies can be found neatly packed in a transparent plastic container, as you see here. This container will display a label reading iMetric 4D, followed by an eight-digit serial number. 
It's essential to cross-check and match these serial numbers on the container with those listed on your DN shipping sheet. A comprehensive review of the ICAM bodies will be conducted in your upcoming online training session. You will also go over these in detail in the A to Z course training located in Huntsville, Alabama. Functionally, the ICAM bodies are the key to the ICAM success. These bodies serve as position identifiers for the camera to locate the implant positions. Close to your ICAM bodies, you will also find a set of screws and a plastic bag. These screws will be labeled 1.4 millimeter short or 1.4 millimeter long. Functionally, the ICAM body screws have a straightforward role. They are the screws that you will use to fix your ICAM bodies onto the patient's MUAs before proceeding with the measurement. In the same bag that you found your ICAM bodies and your ICAM body screws, you will also find a small cylindrical plastic tube. This tube contains your ICAM body screwdriver. This is a small handheld hex driver. Functionally, the purpose of the ICAM body screwdriver is to enable doctors to manually secure the ICAM bodies onto the MUAs. This screwdriver proves to be incredibly beneficial in scenarios where space is limited. The last item that you will find in the small plastic bag will be your iCam refs. They have been anodized to be better suited for IO scanning devices. Functionally, the purpose of the iCam refs is to provide a scan body to either scan digitally with the IO scanner inside the mouth or to use an impression of the gingiva with the iCam refs integrated. That concludes our unboxing tutorial and the definition of all components that come with the iCam. We hope this was useful and we look forward to training you on the measurement and the processing pieces of the iCAM in the near future. If you need to sign up for in-person training in Huntsville, please check out this website. We would love to meet and train you. If you are unable to come in person, we can train you virtually by signing up for this link. For virtual training, make sure to have iScan 3D Dental installed on your machine prior. You can sign up for an install via this link. If you have any more questions about the contents of your shipment or ordering additional accessories, you can reach sales at this email. You can reach international sales at this email. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.